Salut everyone, in this video we are going to go really deep. <laughs> Why am I saying that? <laughs> no. no, I can't start like that. Salut everyone, in this video we'll take a deep dive at Alma Linux 10. And yes, on paper, this distribution, which is uh, a clone of Red Hat 10, is really oriented toward more like an, an enterprise approach. However, what was really interesting regarding like gaming and concentration was the fact that Alma Linux, like Red Hat 10, did drop 32-bit support like, like totally. And I was wondering like, can you still game on that? Like what, what will be the outcome? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out. Are you ready? Let's get into it. As always, let's start with a little bit of context because I'm pretty sure that a lot of you guys are totally unfamiliar with Alma Linux. And Alma Linux is in fact a free and open source enterprise Linux distribution built from the source code of Red Hat Enterprise Linux or RHEL for, for the one who, who like acronym. But when Red Hat decided to change direction with CentOS, Alma Linux emerged as a direct replacement, promising binary compatibility with RHEL. Now, compared to Rocky Linux, another like RHEL rebuild, Alma Linux is backed by Cloud Linux Incorporated, meaning that they have a dedicated team and resources focused on development and community support while Rocky focuses on being 100% bug-for-bug -bug compatible with RHEL, Alma Linux takes a slightly more forward-looking approach, sometimes incorporating new packages and features a little bit faster. And this is especially like apparent in this version 10. So to resume, I would say that Alma Linux is really focused on patching like the little bug which are coming out from real 10 and making sure that everything is more fluid while Rocky Linux is really focusing on a one-to-one -one type of experience. On top of that, I would like to add that Alma Linux, contrary to Rocky or Red Hat, still supports the V2 CPU. So I don't want to go too deep into that, but there is like V3, V4, V2 type of CPU. V2 instructions are a little bit like holder and Red Hat totally drops them. So if you have a system which is like a little bit holder and you want to keep like the enterprise uh, level type of Linux, Alma Linux might be the one for you. The second point I wanted to mention is Alma Linux also have a really more like a cloud oriented approach when it comes to, to the operating system versus Rocky. They really like put this uh, in emphasis in their website. Uh, obviously, I couldn't try it during those tests because I'm, I'm trying bare metal on my machine and it's more like a gaming and content creation channel. But it's something like you could be interested in uh, if you are into this space, I would say. Now, let's talk about the good stuff. And what does Alma Linux 10 brings to the table is first off an installation process which is incredibly straightforward. It's a clean and modern installer that is easy to navigate even for beginners. And once you installed, you are greeted with a very polished system. Another huge advantage is the documentation. The Alma Linux wiki is fantastic. Like, let's be clear, uh, I, I don't think it goes really deep as a arch wiki but he has this like easiness of uh, handle like for me which is a total noob when it comes to uh, the red hat world it was really easy for me to add all the repo and, and and go straight to the point and and to this i have to say like it was it was really nice really really good good experience now if you look at the overall like approach of alma linux they really have a strip things down, really providing like a solid, like enterprise grade based system. So it, it means that you won't be bogged by any of those like pre-installed like bloatware. Cause I know some of you are always like, Hey, you know, like this distro has a lot of bloatware. Well here it's like 
really straightforward even with the work extension like uh, installation it was like super clean and uh, if you go through their like install process you have like kind of like a net installer where you choose everything from scratch or start with a really like basic like uh, server like base and then you can add whatever you want on top of it but yes, it, it is like really minimalistic. Now for the gamer, and especially the NVIDIA one, it come with an excellent support for the NVIDIA driver. Like getting those up and running was a breeze, uh, which is kind of like crucial those days. But again, I was super like surprised by how easy it was, and also by the fact that the version of the driver were exactly the same as the one on Arch. Yes. So it was like, pretty quick and that i have to say i really appreciate that and if you are like me and you are not really like a fan of gnome because the workstation version like is delivered with gnome you can easily switch with uh, kd plasma in like like two commands man that that was a breeze i was also surprised by that uh, you have some type of like group install you do via the terminal and bam you are on KDE, so this was really nice. And for the one who really like to tinker, well, uh, you can go further by installing the Cache OS kernel via the Copper, like for people who don't know, it's a community package repository uh, from Fedora. You can add it. And well, uh, it was pretty easy to install. Uh, I had to deactivate SE Linux, but SE Linux is also super easy to deactivate on this distro. So yeah, for this side, it was a, a total breeze to kind of like optimize the distro to game. But gaming is where like the distro kind of falls short, I have to say. And man, the first thing I want to mention is the fact that there is no more support for 32-bit architecture anymore. So this is a conscious decision to focus on modern hardware and security, but it does exclude a lot of like older system, but also a lot of application. And the first application which is directly impacted for us gamer on Linux is Steam. So I was wondering during my full review and test and benchmark live on YouTube, I'm gonna put the link in the description if you wanna go watch how I went through like bypassing the 32-bit li limitation, uh, but I had to install it through uh, Flatpak. And yeah, while Flatpak is really convenient, it does introduce a slight performance overhead. And I did run some tests and I found out that I was getting around like 7% lower FPS in certain games compared to my Arch-based setup, aka Kashi OS, <laughs> by the way. Obviously, it was not a massive difference, but it was still noticeable. I'm pretty sure like some of you are going to be like, damn, I have this hardware and I can get like 100% of it, just like 93% out of it. Um, so that, that was a problem in terms of like overall like paper FPS number, because honestly, like I go from 350 to 320 FPS, won't change my gaming experience. However, when I did jump uh, in, in over, like I would say like competitive game, uh, it, it felt less responsive. Okay, it's, it was not really like the best experience out there. I know for you, like, you know, it won't be a deal breaker, but even after like tweaking settings, trying to get everything snappy, like I, I was not able to, to reach this goal. I was not able to reach the type of like experience I would get on an Arch-based distro, which is kind of sad. Like, let, let's be clear. I, I kind of love Alma Linux, but yeah. It was not, it was not there. Now, moving on to content creation, like things got a little bit more challenging. DaVinci Resolve, which is a, a popular video editing software, I'm pretty sure you, you all know about it, uh, it seems to be optimized for older version of Alma Rocky, right? And especially like the 8.6 version. So when I tried to install it, it was a usual pain. And I didn't really encounter that on Rocky 9. So I believe like because uh, we are having like new packages and the DaVinci Resolve team didn't set up their installer to be compatible with the latest version of uh, Red Hat 10 and, and Red Hat 10 base in general. Well, this is where we are. So could you install it? Yes, but it's going to be a lot of work. You're going to have to debug 
uh, move packages around. And I, and I was willing to do it on stream. And after like 20 minutes of battling, I was like, you know what? I'm out. Uh, don't waste your time on that. Uh, but yeah, it, it was kind of a, a lose here. You know, like I, yeah, it didn't feel great. Now, can Alma Linux handle content creation? Yes, you can still install OBS via Flatpak. You can still install like your favorite, like alternative when it comes to like editing video, like Caden Live or whatever you want. But you have to make sure like they are available on Flatpak and everything should be smooth. But again, uh, it, it was it was kind of like, you know, this distribution where uh, you have to put a little bit more effort to get there. Now to the overall defense of Alma Linux 10, you have to understand that the repository are still being populated, meaning that some packages and dependencies might be missing or outdated. Uh, so this will likely improve over time as the community contributes and the developer add more software. But right now, because we are really fresh and uh, this distro uh, should be supported for the, the next 10 years, uh, we are already at the beginning, right? Like we are like two months in or one month and a half. Uh, you're going to have some ups and downs if you are, uh, you know, jumping into it. All right. So how do we conclude this one? I would say that Alma Linux 10 is my favorite Red Hat base slash clone distribution. Um, right now, I was really impressed by Rocky Linux, but I have to say that uh, the different like uh, patch attention, uh, little rework they do in the repo of Alma Linux is, in my opinion, like uh, well suited for a workstation slash uh, gaming slash content creation uh, PC. Uh, Rocky Linux is still great. Don't get me wrong. But I think like Alma Linux bring a little bit more polish. That will be my, my feedback overall. And again, I'm thinking about the NVIDIA driver there. Uh, but like the, the, the wiki is more like streamlined. So it's, it's easier for a newcomer uh, to put, uh, I would say like it and on this type of like enterprise distro. Now, the little like test uh, within the test was really related to the drop of 32 bit architecture and what it implies for us gamer and content creator on Linux. And Alma Linux 10 was definitely uh, an easy way to get there and test. My feedback towards that is that we are not in a position right now for the gamer to drop 32 bits. I don't think it's a good idea to play on this type of like distro, which doesn't have like any 32 bit support right now. Uh, again, like Steam is not ready for that. You're gonna encounter a lot of issues. And even if you solve them, you're gonna have like uh, some type of performance drawback, which are not necessary, right? There is so many alternatives out there that pushing towards this direction when you, when you want a game, in my opinion, is, uh, you know, complicated. Let's word it this way. It's complicated. Now, if you really want to go that route and create content or game uh, on an enterprise-based distro, I will maybe recommend uh, Alma Linux 9, right? Because this one still has the 32-bit support. Uh, the repos are going to be a little bit like older you're gonna have maybe like more application because the new ones are not fully populated yet so you're gonna be in a position where you can have best of both worlds you can avoid the, the flat pack version of steam you can still have the latest kernel the latest driver you should be in my opinion like solid uh, you might be a little bit behind in terms of like version of desktop environment but still you should still be fine and just wait for example, like DaVinci Resolve to step up their game in terms of library and dependency, like update within their installer package. And also uh, for maybe like soon, hopefully uh, Steam uh, solving all the issues related to the 32-bit package drop. I don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon, but considering the life cycle of those distro, if you don't want to upgrade uh, your Alma Linux uh, for the next like six uh, or five years, you should be fine. 
and in feed two years, for example, like Steam solved their issue related to 32 bit like drop. Well, guess what? You just upgrade from Alma Linux 9 to Alma Linux 10. Simple as that. But yeah, I was a, I was a fun experience. I have to say, guys, I really hope you you enjoy uh, the content. Uh, don't forget to put a comment in the section below. Give a thumbs up. And also, I want to thank all the members of La Crème de la Crème Club for supporting the channel via YouTube or Patreon. Guys, thank you again for watching and see you in the next one. Bisous, bisous.